Uh, well, good morning, everybody, and on behalf of myself and uh, my colleagues at ABRI, uh, I'd like to thank the conference organisers for the opportunity to speak on a project that we've been running for the last 12 months, and also want to thank them for uh, hosting the conference in such an awesome uh, location. ABRI is an Australian-based agribusiness company uh, with an international client base. And there's a number of products that we are involved with, one of them being genetic evaluation, specifically for the Hereford breed. So the title that I was given was uh, International uh, Hereford Evaluation, The Answers to All Your Questions. And I thought that was quite a grand title because I don't even know what all the questions are, so I can't necessarily answer them. So what, I've what I'm presenting today is what I call big picture to reality, an actual evaluation that we've undertaken, and treat it as like a straw man. I'm putting it out there so that you have something real and tangible to look at and then work out exactly how you want it to look. Otherwise, we keep talking about looking into the future. So we're giving you something specific here. Now, I can't say that this is the first time that uh, international evaluations have been discussed. If we go back to the uh, 14th World, Congress, uh, World Conference in 2004, there were a number of papers there about the World Hereford Linkage Project. And one of the presenters, Bob Freer, uh, who some of you may know, have known, he said, the preliminary work has been done and the stage set for the Hereford breed to lead the world in genetic evaluation by providing its members the opportunity to objectively compare and access the best genetics for their needs, regardless of where those genetics originate. It was a grand vision, and I congratulate World Hereford Council for basically leading the way amongst all beef cattle breeds globally in terms of trying to move towards an, uh, an international evaluation. However, 16 years on, there have been many enhancements to national evaluations for Herefords. We've seen the incorporation of genomics. We've seen new and emerging traits. Uh, we've seen a number of other analytical developments, but there still has been no real practical gain made in the development of an international evaluation for the Hereford breed. So what I'd like to outline today is a project that ABRI has been working on and is nearing completion. Now, firstly, on the uh, slide here, I want you to appreciate that when it comes to an international evaluation, it's not just the black box that crunches out the breeding values, whether they're EBVs or EPDs. There is more than just a black box. There is a whole pipeline of processes from start to finish. And so in the top left corner, we go from databases, from databases to data extracts, through to the merging of extracts into the black box, how you report from it, how you use it, and how you go about implementing it. There are a number of service providers involved in each of those steps. And I just do want to point out that ABRI, our bigger uh, perspective, is to ensure we have products and processes available in each of those parts of the pipeline. When it comes to the black box, the analysis, there are three main evaluations currently underway for multi-country Herefords. There's one using breed plan, there's one using Bolt, and there's one being developed in Europe with Mix 99. And one of the uh, privileges, I guess, of ABRI is we're involved in script development or have been involved in script development of each of those evaluations. So, this leads me to our International Hereford Project and ABRI initiative. Basically, we have a number of Hereford breed clients. They either use our database system, ILR2, they use our genetic evaluation system, breed plan, or they use our data management and extract services. We have uh, eight clients in total that cover that. 
We put out an invitation to each of those to provide access to their pedigree and performance data at no cost to the association at all. If possible, provision of genotypes. Uh, and everything was confidential. We're not reporting, and I will not be reporting, results on individual named animals this morning. This uh, project is part of a larger project funded by the MLA donor company uh, called Investigating and Implementing International Multi-Trait Genetic Evaluations for Beef Cattle. We're working with a number of breeds, but Hereford is our leading breed because the breed has done an exceptional job in trying to develop linkage so projects like this can take place. Very quickly, ILR2, ILR2, our, um, our performance and our breed registry database, is because of its global distribution, it actually gives us a universal or global language to talk about genetic evaluation. So I can log into the UK and I can produce extracts that are ready for genetic evaluation. I can plug into New Zealand and derive exactly the same uh, extracts in exactly the same format, pedigree, performance, genomics. I then have software that allows me to interrogate all those databases and build the cross-referencing system that says which animals are shared in common across countries. So we have a universal language. So we have seven countries that are participating in this project, Australia, New Zealand, Namibia, the UK, Canada, Uruguay, Argentina. And I've looked at performance records that are collected in two or more countries. So we have a range of weight traits, birth weaning, yielding final, mature cow, there are scrotal circumference, and there are three ultrasound scan traits. 7.7 uh, .7 million performance records in total, that's about 3 million animals with performance, and we have at least two generations of pedigree behind all of that. All of that is going into the one evaluation. Uh, as of late last year, there are another six countries uh, based in Europe through our collaboration with Interbeef that are looking to come into this analysis. I'm going to skip that. Um, basically, for each of the countries, we start from scratch. So we are estimating country-specific adjustment factors, country-specific genetic parameters. Then we also have an international genetic parameter set, and we run each country through various combinations of those models. And then we throw everything in together into what you see in the bottom left corner there, this global what I call the international run. So I can do comparisons of national results versus international results and look at how well we can predict country proofs from international proofs. The other project that I'm currently working on is a validation trial. I believe that all genetic evaluations for beef cattle should have validation uh, of their predictive capacity. So what we do is we, we remove an amount of data and then we see to what extent can we predict future generations on the basis of the proofs that we've calculated. So we are doing validation work for each of the national runs and validation work for each of the international runs. Now, in the, uh, because of time, I will not get through all of this uh, with enough time for you to absorb it, so please uh, speak with me afterwards. This, is, this slide here just compares on the bottom axis what I call my Australian uh, results. This is Canadian results. This is for sires with weaning weight progeny in both countries. And this highlights the frustration that many of you might experience. Why do the proofs estimated in your own country not really reflect what you're seeing overseas? So look at these two sires here shaded in black. They have the same Australian proof, but they vary quite dramatically in the Canadian proof. The problem is when you look at progeny records. So here you've got how many weaning weight progeny in the Australian data, how many in the Canadian data, and these two sires have less than 50 progeny recorded for weaning weight in Australia, 
but they have between two and 300 progeny in Canada. You're just looking at different amounts of data. That's, that's why it's hard to make these across country comparisons. If we throw it all in together though, here we have the Australian EBV and the international EBV with quite a high correlation and here you have the Canadian EBV with the international EBV for the same size, a very high correlation. So ranking nationally is reflected in how they rank internationally and that gives us uh, a good sense of confidence to keep working in this project. The big question from my point of view is not how to crunch the numbers, but how do we report the numbers? How do we put it into a practical way for breeders to be able to use? And here, this is just a demonstration system. This is open for redesign. I just wanted to have something to show you. It's an international Hereford reporting option. So you can look at animals from each of the participating countries, if they have semen available. So if we had semen catalogues, you could put all of that into the system. You can restrict on sort of performance levels. We can look at animals, you know, based on herd usage or uh, there's country usage in this little box here or uh, 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 the amount of progeny available. We could put in certain criteria for uh, EBV restrictions. This is the slide that for me is the most important to come out of the international run. Here these are sires that have their own performance records in the evaluation, so as well as progeny records. They rank in the lowest 50% for international, uh, the lowest 50% for birth weight on international EBVs. They, they rank above average for growth they rank above average for scrotal size, and I've ranked them in descending order for eye muscle area. And there's 300 and something sires in that cohort, but the important thing is, you can see flags from almost all the countries represented. There is no single country that dominates the provision of high-level genetics, depending on what your selection traits might be. Okay, so here, yes, I've got a, an Australian sire at the top. We've got Canadian, New Zealand, Uruguayan, UK, more Uruguayan, New Zealand, Canadian, and so on. It's just a subset. If I change the criteria and now list them in descending order on scan IMF, we have a completely different cohort of sires. This is what I think needs to take place. This is the practical way of reporting from an international evaluation. You could go in there and look at sires beyond your own borders and make selection decisions on the basis of the international proofs that are available. Now one of the, oh, I just thought I'd show you this one here. If I restrict it and say, sires with weaning weight progeny in three or more countries and having their own performance data included in the analysis. There are four Canadian sires and one New Zealand sire uh, that come up in this evaluation. And I've just ranked them there um, uh, in descending order on growth. Depending on what your selection criteria are, you could identify sires that perhaps better meet your breeding objectives. Okay, so that's a snapshot of recording. One of the issues becomes, well, does this, does this become the only evaluation that we run? Is it like we're just going to have one big bucket that everything goes into? Well, if it is, at the very least, you have a way of benchmarking genetics on a common platform, and you could use that in marketing. You could say, given all the assumptions that go into an international evaluation, this is how these sires rank on the basis of their, the proofs that are being reported. So there would be the opportunity for semen sales, but there's also the opportunity for benchmarking your own herd genetics against the alternatives that are there 
in the international market. But not all the traits that have gone into this particular international evaluation, not all of those traits, uh, sorry, of the traits that go into the evaluation, there are a whole host of other traits that national evaluations include. So in the Australian, Tas uh, the Australian New Zealand Trans Tasman, uh, Trans Tasman Breed Plan Analysis, we have additional traits. We have carcass traits, we have gestation length, we have calving ease, net feed intake, uh, female fertility traits, emerging meat quality traits. I'm not suggesting we put those into the international run because no one else is recording them. And I don't believe that's the best way. Uh, I, it would be good for the Australian and New Zealand proofs coming out but the EBVs for other countries, I don't believe would be worth reporting. So what do you do? You have one big bucket and a lot of other little buckets, and one opportunity would be to take the international proofs and find ways to integrate them into your own national evaluations, if you are running a national evaluation. For, say, the European countries, which have very small populations and very small data sets, you might choose simply to report from the international evaluation. You would see where your genetics rank, and then you could look for alternate um, uh, foreign genetics if you were looking to bring them in. So with that, I would like to... Um, um, just acknowledge the funding body, MLA Donor Company. And I do very much want to thank the participating Hereford associations. I think, from my point of view, Hereford is the only breed where I've been able to get really good collaborative, a, a collaborative work ethic amongst breed associations. And so to have seven associations willing to combine their data, willing to allow us to run the evaluation and then we will report back to each of the countries on how their international proofs compare with their national proofs, as well as to validate how well the international predicts the future performance of progeny born in their own country. To have those seven countries agree to collaborate, I think is a world first in beef cattle uh, populations globally. And with that comment, I want to congratulate the Hereford breed because the foresight that the World Hereford Council had in 2004 to work towards a combined evaluation has set the scene uh, they, are tra they, are, they are world leaders in that capacity. And so finally, I'd like to thank the New Zealand Hereford Association and the World Hereford Conference Organising Committee for the opportunity to actually present some real outcomes and real opportunities, which you can now work out what you'd want to do with, you know, whether you want to move forward or you want to pull it apart and redesign, uh, we're open to all options. We just think it's easier to put something on the table that can be discussed than to keep talking about what if, what if, what if. So with that, I'll come to uh, the end of my talk and I look forward to discussions with, with uh, the various breed associations over the next few days. Thank you very much.